Hey everybody, the march for our lives is a march of incompetence. It is a march of ignorance. I want to be very clear and very careful up front that I have no problem with children who voice their opinion, right or wrong, but understand their First Amendment principle and decide that they want to use their voice to speak out on something. I have no problem with that. But what I do have a problem with is grown adults who use children who are very ignorant of many things regarding the use of guns and laws about guns and using them as a political tool for their own selfish gain. Whether you are a media organization like CNN or MSNBC or any one of these other many left-wing outlets that you can find, or whether you are a private citizen, whether you're a nonprofit group, I don't care. That I find despicable and that I find evil. You have many of these people at the March for Our Lives when they had the rally and all these different things. You can watch many videos online of, of people interviewing people on the street and asking them simple, basic questions. And the people who are there cannot answer them. Like when you ask somebody, what is an assault weapon? They just don't understand because they've been given a term that really is not even factual. When you ask them, how can you stop gun violence? They don't have an answer that is actually factual. They believe that if you get rid of the guns, violence goes down, which is not factual. They believe if you ban the bump stocks and get rid of high capacity magazines, that will reduce the crime. Even though you can go to Baltimore, D.C., Chicago, and many other locales, the crime has gone up or stayed very high in regards to murders and gun violence. And even though statistically over the last couple of decades, that level of violence has been going down, but in these areas where they have put in all these safety and gun control measures, crime and gun violence has still stayed at a relative high pace. But when you go to states like Montana, Idaho, and Alaska, where over 50% of the people in the state own guns, you see a rare, a ridiculously low amount of actual gun uh, violence and homicide via a gun. So the level of ignorance with these people, and let's say I, I was looking a lot, excuse me, at this guy, uh, Cameron Kasky, once again, I'm not trying to besmirch his character and speak ill of him because I try to use my channel just to expose the facts and just to expose what the true narrative and the true understanding should be about the situation. But when I see somebody like him who talks about he wants to debate this, this other guy who is obviously uh, also a teenager, a high schooler, who is pro Second Amendment and believes that banning guns is not the, the, uh, the solution, um, he, uh, this Cameron Kasky guy was the same guy who, who talked about Marco Rubio and saying, hey, when I look at your face, I can't help but see uh, the shooter that, that shot and killed these kids in the school. Like, how in, first off, how insulting and disgusting is that comment? All right? That's just a horrible comment to say to somebody. Marco Rubio is not your problem. Marco Rubio is not the guy who went up in the school and shot the kids. He's the problem. The government officials, the sheriff, and... The, anybody else and other politicians who put in measures in the schools to make it darn near impossible to arrest problematic kids so that then they would be flagged for any kind of time they would want to go and purchase a gun. Those people are part of your, are your problem. Marco Rubio is not your problem. But then at the same time, this guy Cameron Kasky, although he says that horrible comment about Marco Rubio, when the other kid commented on a tweet Referencing somebody else that somebody else tweeted, he said, because of that, that personal attack that you gave him, I have to be out. I can't do the debate. So let me get this straight. So Mr. Cameron Caskey, with all due respect, you're okay with calling somebody else, basically, or insinuating that somebody else is like a high school shooter who bludgeoned and murdered innocent children, yet at the same time, you're going to drop out of a reasonable debate with somebody because you think they said something that, quote unquote, in your opinion, is a personal attack. This is what happens, you guys, when you elevate children and you make them leaders. Children are not leaders. Children need to be led. 
and many adults need to be led, as we can obviously see with this left-wing media who is taking advantage of this. These children do not understand gun policy. They don't understand guns. But what they do understand is emotion. And the left-wing side of the aisle loves them some emotion. Emotion can be used for their own personal gain. This is why the left and left-wing media does not like conservatives with strong conviction. Because conservatives with strong conviction rely on facts and rational and reasonable data from reasonable sources. And you can't really try to pull somebody like that because their conviction is too strong. But guess what? When somebody is emotional, you can pull them almost any way you want. You can make them seem like a simple semi-automatic rifle is a, is a town-killing machine. And it's totally not. The AR-15 is not a problem. High-capacity magazines are not a problem. We had more readily available guns 40, 50 years ago than today. But we didn't have the violence and the gun homicides like we have today. Now, there has to be something about that. I mean, you used to be able to look in catalogs, like a Sears catalog or any one of these other catalogs. You used to be able to look in those and just see pages of pages of guns, rifles, all this different stuff. Young kids, teenage kids, their parents bought them rifles in their young teenage years because that was just the thing to do. But you didn't see young kids taking those said rifles and going into schools and shooting up other innocent children. Why is that? Might it be there's a morality problem in America, in the world in general, but we are residing here, I reside in America. Is it a morality problem? If it is a morality problem, how did that come about? It came about with the more of the concentration and the proliferation of people turning away from God, turning away from Jesus and the scriptures, and turning to their own selfish understandings. You cannot look at the fact that more guns were readily available in yesteryears and less crime and look at today with less availability of said guns and more devastation and not look at culture and morality. And this is where I keep on harping on the righteousness of people. And this is what we're not teaching our children. And this is what we're not producing in the media. What we like to produce is violence. And I'm not saying that you can't have a movie or a film with some sort of violence in it. But I'm talking about gratuitous violence, gratuitous language, gratuitous sexuality in the public airwaves, in the music. You cannot have a steady diet of unrighteousness and think you're going to produce a righteous child. I mean, it's just... To me, it's just plain as the, as the nose on my face. So with the March for Our Lives, the movement, the rally, to me, it's a punching in the wind. It's like chasing a dollar in a sandstorm. It's pointless because nobody is talking about the real issue and the real issue is the morality of the person. You watching this video, you know that to be true. Deep down inside, you know it's a morality issue. It's not a gun issue. But for some odd reason, people's inclination is to run to the guns. And it's just not going to work. You can ban every single gun. They'll go get themselves a ghost gun over in the Philippines. They'll uh, 3D print a gun. That's not the issue. That's not going to work until people know their value and in their value in Christ and no morality, as God has taught us in the scriptures, you're going to have this over and over and over again. Those are my thoughts on the March for Our Lives. I wish people would march to morality and march to where righteousness flows from God himself, from Jesus, God in the flesh. I wish we would start marching for that. The scriptures say that Jesus is the author of life. I wish we would march towards the author of life. Because this March for Our Life movement, although they are practicing their First Amendment 
principles, their First Amendment right, just because you practice your First Amendment right doesn't mean you land on righteousness. That's my time, y'all. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Appreciate you guys watching my past and previous videos. Subscribe if you will. That would be greatly appreciated. I do this for free. I'm not looking for uh, Patreon and all that different stuff. I just do this because I want to get my thoughts out there. If it helps somebody, if it helps to open up somebody's understanding and maybe see, help them to see a different side, a point of view, a perspective, that's great. Anyways, appreciate you. Talk to you later.